Okay, does anyone in the audience like to drink beer? <laughs> okay, this presentation is for you and all the people that you like to drink beer with. Let's get started. It has been said that Bozeman, Montana is a drinking town with a skiing and fishing problem. After a fun day on the river or a bridge or bowl, who doesn't like to retell the day's escapades over a tasty draft beer? But what happens when that beer is not so tasty? Have you ever ordered your favorite draft beer, took a sip and thought, hmm, this beer tastes a bit skunky. That is what we are going to explore tonight, skunky tasting beer. Specifically, we are going to talk about skunky tasting draft beer. And because it is important to state your assumptions in science and engineering, we are going to assume that the quality of beer in the keg is spot on. So we are only considering the beer and every surface it encounters as it travels from the keg to the tap. Beer draft systems are complex and include multiple feet of different types of tubing and connectors. Often the kegs are kept in a cold room that is not necessarily close to where the beer is served. Draft lines may be in place for multiple years. And one draft line may dispense multiple flavors of beer. In addition, we all know that some beers are simply better than others and therefore sell more quickly. That means that the beer that does not sell may sit stagnant in the line most of the time. Three main factors must all work together to have a great tasting beer. The first factor is how the beer is poured, including temperature of the beer and amount of carbon dioxide. The second factor to consider is the glass used to serve the beer and how clean it is. Also, was a proper glass used for the beer being served? But we are going to focus on hygiene and what happens when beer draft lines are not properly maintained. For starters, the beer can have an unintended hazy appearance. And most importantly, the flavor profile associated with the beer will not be correct, hence the skunky label. Most often, the responsible culprit for poor draft beer hygiene is biofilm, which is essentially clumps of microscopic bugs embedded in slime. The microscopic image you are seeing consists of yeast and bacteria growing as three-dimensional community inside a beer draft line. Biofilm is found all around us. The hot pools in Yellowstone Park contain examples of beautiful biofilms. The rocks that are slimy when you cross a stream while hiking are also covered in biofilms. The kitchen sponge that has that funk that just will not go away, even when it is washed, is most likely filled with biofilm, as is the kitchen dish rag or your kids' sports clothes. And in the morning, that slimy feel on your teeth? Yep, you guessed it, a biofilm. When my daughter saw the biofilm that came out of the bathroom sink drain, she responded, disgusting, yet fascinating. Demonstrating beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. It should not come as a surprise that I am a research professor at the Center for Biofilm Engineering on the MSU campus. My colleagues and I are dedicated to the study, control, and exploitation of biofilm found in industrial systems, the environment, human body, and buildings. Remember that drain picture. But we are interested in the biofilm found in beer draft lines. And what you don't want to see are beer draft lines like the picture on the left or a Fomon beer detector that looks like the one on the right. Keep in mind that while these bacteria spoil how the beer tastes, these particular biofilms do not harm you. To better our understanding of biofilm and beer draft lines, the Brewers Association funded my laboratory to do some research. We built a laboratory model of a draft beer system added some beer spoilage bacteria and yeast, and monitored how the biofilm grew over time. More importantly, 
The Brewers Association wanted us to determine if the cleaning guidelines recommended in the draft beer quality manual worked against biofilm. Interestingly, these guidelines are based on the sinner's circle of cleaning, and my OCD heart went vindicated. The sinner in this case, though, is a chemist named Herbert Sinner, but the four factors of time, temperature, chemistry, and mechanics involved in effective cleaning devised in 1959 still hold true today. Here again, all four factors are equally important. We grew our biofilms for the same amount of time in a brand new beer draft line and on draft lines artificially aged to simulate one, two, and five years of use. And you can see that the older the system, the more biofilm accumulated. We then followed the cleaning guidelines in the draft beer quality manual. And, drum roll please, the guidelines based on the center circle of cleaning worked. The majority of the biofilm was removed, which is great news for all you lovers of quality draft beer. But, isn't there always a but? But, the chemistry does start to degrade the tubing. So the story ends with, if you want great tasting beer, clean the lines every two weeks as recommended to remove the biofilm buildup. But after five years of use, consider replacing the tubing. So raise your glasses and a toast with me. Here is to enjoying a draft beer after a day of fishing, or skiing, and to the science that keeps it tasting the way the brewer intended. Cheers.